we all talk about being as free as a bird and I think we're fascinated with flight so much that we want to capture that freedom and movement in our paintings but how do we do that without having to paint every single feather or every marking on their plumage? Well in this course I want to share lots of tools and techniques of watercolour that will help us capture that freedom in a really expressive way without getting caught up in the tiny details but really getting to the character and behaviour of the birds. By the end of the course you should have the skills and experience you need to capture any bird on paper whether it's perched in a tree or flying whether it's something really exotic or, or humdrum. So what we're going to do is start off using garden birds as our, our muse and we're going to look at how to capture and sketch those birds very rapidly by finding the inner egg shapes. Birds come from eggs and they stay pretty egg shaped and then we'll add colour to that to do some pen and wash studies. After that we're going to look at how all the edges in watercolour, soft and hard edges, lost and found, really help us capture the lightness and the flight of birds and we'll use a Canada goose for that. Next we're going to go on and look at eyes because you might think oh yeah bird's eyes they're just sort of small and round and sort of sparkly but actually bird's eyes have as much variation in them as mammals eyes. And then we're going to do a wonderful portrait of a tawny owl's head really capturing those lovely luminous eyes but swapping colours around. Part of that will be about colour value switching, which is when we can swap colours around, but still have a recognisable subject. After that, we're going to move on to some more mark making and different textural techniques, and then put them into practice in guinea fowl. Finally, we're going to do a pen and wash study of a kestrel in flight. So you'll see that we're going to cover pen and wash, pure watercolour, and a bit of mixed media. We're going to use garden birds, domestic fowl, birds of prey, waterfowl as our muses. So in these sort of six lessons we're going to cover an awful lot and as I say at the end you should have a real toolkit and the experience and confidence to be able to go on to your own subjects. So please check out the materials list that is included here and there's a more detailed contents list if you want to take a look at that. The course is recorded here in my studio, so it's not in a professional TV studio with beautiful makeup and amazing lighting, but you will be able to hear what I say and see what I'm doing. I'm not relying on clever angles and a script. This is as close as possible to sitting alongside me and learning from me in person. You've got lifetime access, which means that you can work at your own pace when you want. You can repeat lessons as often as you like. You can go back and refresh yourself if you feel that you've forgotten something or you want to do a particular subject but in a different palette or a different composition. So that's all there for you. This course is pretty comprehensive and is a great accompaniment to my book, Painting Birds in Watercolour, that came out earlier this year. But it also stands alone if you're the sort of person that learns by, by seeing and doing rather than reading. So it can work in both ways. If you've got any questions about the course and whether it's right for you, drop me an email and I'll do my best to help. So at the end of this course, I think you'll have the skills, experience, and tools that you need to capture everything that's beautiful and to celebrate everything about things with wings. I hope you really enjoy it.